All right. Well, it obviously, when we go from physiology to number four to pathophysiology, obviously things go bad. It becomes more systemic. It becomes, you know, really a major part of the patient's um, presentation. I think we have to talk about the about the presentation too, about what we see in those patients um, in this. So let's do pathophysiology. Let's continue down this very dangerous path. Okay. So we know sepsis is triggered by an infection. So all of the stuff that I mentioned before, whatever the source of the infection, that's all what happens. The complement proteins, toll-like receptors do their thing, start activating stuff. Just like we think of anaphylaxis, here's where we get the pathophysiology as the body's inappropriate, overwhelming, incorrect response. Instead of just fighting the infection in one place, and again, I want to make one more analogy here real quickly with anaphylaxis. We don't see a patient with who's having an anaphylactic reaction to a bee sting and think, well, they must have been stung by a whole swarm of bees. I mean, you would never think, well, in order to have anaphylaxis, if you're allergic to peanuts, you have to eat a whole jar of peanut butter. Otherwise, there's no way that you could have anaphylaxis. We would never think of it that way. Well, the immune system is just the same way. It doesn't have to be a giant overwhelming infection. It could be any infection that starts the cascade that I already described. That's when the body has its inappropriate reaction, just like it does in anaphylaxis, that instead of just responding with these chemical messengers calling immune system uh, components to the site of the infection, they start going everywhere. It's the domino effect throughout the whole body. The inflammatory response that's supposed to only be where the infection is starts to occur everywhere. So if you get this cut in your hand, all of a sudden you're getting an inflammatory response that's causing vasodilation across the whole body. And we're dropping down the relative volume in the blood vessels, right? We're making the container bigger. But it's more than that. The inflammatory response is also causing the blood vessels to leak out. So we're not just getting a relative hypovolemia, we're getting an actual hypovolemia. And we're activating immune components all over the body. And some immune components are, like I said, these initial ones, the innate immunity is not always specific to the infection. It'll come in and just start blowing up everything. I mean, think of it like that the crazy guy in, in one of the alien movies is going in and shooting and throwing grenades at everything to, we're going to nuke it from space. It's the only way to be sure. Um, they just destroy everything, including healthy cells. So the, this response, when it's pathophysiological, is also ripping apart good parts of the body. Now, it's happening on the micro scale, so it's very easy to miss. But throughout the whole body, capillaries are not only leaking, but they're starting to rip and tear, which means it's triggering uh, bleeding. And bleeding is going to trigger uh, the clotting mechanism. So now clotting is happening all over the body. As the blood pressure is dropping, clotting is starting to happen throughout capillaries all over the place. So circulation overall is getting worse. It's leaking out. It's third spacing. While there is this inflammatory response causing swelling to occur in all different parts of the body, so not only is there less pressure in the circulatory system, but the swelling and the inflammatory response and the fluid leaking is further squeezing in on these low pressure capillaries. So it's just shutting circulation off everywhere. And this micro bleeding that's starting to happen triggers the um, clotting cascade all over the body. We can start to get something called disseminated intravascular coagulation. And it's exactly what it says on the label. It's disseminated throughout the body, intravascular, so it's throughout the circulatory system, but you know it's small, so it's mostly in the capillaries, um, and it's coagulation, it's clotting. And you would think that's bad enough. We got the drop in blood pressure, we're leaking, we're squeezing on the blood vessels, we're, we're clotting all over the place. But then remember that our clotting mechanism, our clotting cascade, only has a certain amount of clotting chemicals floating throughout the body. So if you activate all of them throughout the body, all at the same time, you use them all up. 
So now we go from clotting unnecessarily to not being able to clot if we need it. And there's more and more. We, we could certainly spend a, a, a huge amount of time if we wanted to really digging into it. But you can see how instead of the site of the infection, it's the whole body where we get that acquired infection, blood vessel problems leading to circulatory collapse. I think that's an outstanding. I love, I love your explanation, the way you make it very understandable. I think people are, are really going to get this.